Episode 3 starts with Al having a conversation with Filet. Filet tells him, by the way, that robe he's wearing. Al notices that it looks the same as his, and tells him it was given to him by a receptionist at the Adventurer's Guild. Her name is Helen. Filet says, I see. No wonder. It's what he wore before he died. His father gave it to him. It contains defensive magic. Al says, magic? And that means... He puts the cloak around Fells. She, of course, asks what he's doing. This seems like something only a couple would do. But she's able to see Lei and begins to freak out. Al covers her mouth and says, my bad, please go on. Lei tells him that he's glad his sister is alright. And tells Al that she's the only survivor of this village. Al brings up that Helen seems to have lost her memory. Lei says that makes sense. After all, the experience was too painful. It's understandable that she would seal it to protect herself. However, if so, his sister is in real danger. Please help her. We get a flashback of Helen walking through the forest, searching for Lei because lunch is ready. She sees him practicing his sword swings, but trips over a rock. She's telling him that it's dangerous to play pretend the way he is, but he says he's not playing pretend. He wants to be a brave warrior when he grows up. She says no way. What if he gets injured again? He tells her that scars are a warrior's medals, and he's not a kid who needs her protection anymore. We then see the evil dragon causing havoc in their village. They run back to see it completely destroyed. The evil dragon corners a group against the wall, and one of the kids throws a rock at it. This causes the dragon to say, how dare he not fear him? This is outrageous. Hope is the power opposite of him. He must kill them all. He kills the two women and sucks up the despair the boy is feeling. Lei doesn't know what's going on, so he suggests they run for it. But Helen brings up, what about the others? He tells them he hates to say this, but the two of them can't help them at all. All they can do is run. As they're running, Helen stops because she sees the dragon fly over them, eventually landing in front of them. The dragon tells them that they can't run from him. He takes off and begins to shoot fireballs at them. He then zooms past them and tells them, that's right, run. Please him with their desperate expressions. Helen is unable to keep up and trips. She tells Lei to leave her behind and run as the dragon lands right behind her. He tells her it looks like the game is over. He'll devour her desperate body and then soul. As he's going to do that, Lei throws his dagger, hitting it in the eye. But the dragon just burns the blade up or something. Lei says it didn't work. The dragon asks, did you really think that would hurt him? Fine, he'll eat him first. The dragon attacks him and then gently puts him down so Helen can talk to him. He tells her to run, but she says no. The dragon says what a delightful expression. Human despair pleases him and gives him more power and tells Helen don't worry. He won't kill her now. He'll appear in front of her again in 15 years and destroy her along with the village where she stays. Then, he'll feast on her despaired soul. Lei well, cuts him off by saying, In your dreams, he won't give up even if he dies. He'll protect his sister from him. The dragon says fine. He'll confine his soul here and tells him, Just wait and see his sister's miserable fate. Then disappears. Lei begins to say something, but dies. And tells Al that is what happened to this village 15 years ago. After destroying a village or city, it will deliberately leave a survivor. Then, after it wakes up from its slumber, it will hunt down the survivor again. The survivors tell others about their experience, so this horrible experience will be spread amongst the people, gradually forming new fears and rumors. When he got eaten, he felt Odubolus' consciousness. That's how he knows. It was eating his fear. It gains power by absorbing its prey's negative energy. It still has its eye on his sister and the people around her. So, he hopes Al can stop it. But Al says that he's not strong enough to beat it. Lei tells him, just don't give it any power. Like he said, it feeds on negative energy. Back then, it said it wouldn't eat him until his soul fell into despair. It didn't just want to kill him. It seemed to be its primary goal. That means if they beat it with the power opposite of despair, they should be able to diminish it. So please tell his sister what he's going to say. 
Al is running back with the princess over his shoulder. She's trying to get him to stop, or at least hold her in his arms. But he tells her sorry, this is the fastest way he can run. They arrive back at the kingdom. Al says good. It looks like the dragon hasn't appeared yet. Fells tells him that his stamina is impressive, but he should learn how to trade a woman. Anyway, she'll call up the soldiers to help the people take refuge in case the dragon attacks. She'll leave Helen to him. The old lady from before is knocking on Helen's door, asking if she wants any fruit. As she enters, she notices that Helen has disappeared. Helen is then seen walking through the woods holding a knife, with her eyes glazed over. She stops and the dragon appears before her, and tells her, long time no see. They haven't met for 15 years. As he's agreed, he's here to eat the trembling souls of her and her peers. Then she remembers that's right. Lei died because of her. How could she forget such an important thing? The dragon rubs salt in the wound by asking, why does she look so shocked? Her brother died because of her. Pierced by his fang, he must have had a miserable death. Helen drops her to the floor. The dragon continues. Her brother could have escaped on his own if only she hadn't dragged him down. Countless people will die soon, and it's all her fault. How does she feel knowing a lot of people will die because of her stupidity? She says, it's all my fault. People are dying because of her. She let that happen. She then grabs the knife. The dragon asks, what will she do? She points the knife at her throat and begs for him to just leave after taking her life. Despair begins to build. The dragon says that's right. The rich smell of despair is flowing out. But whether she does or not, He'll kill all the people in the city. He'll burn and crush them all. Their pleasing screams will make him feel more excited. Back at the kingdom, the princess is telling the soldiers to help the people take refuge. And for the knights to go guard the front gate. In hopes that Al won't overdo himself. The dragon says what? Wasn't she going to kill herself? Or does she want to see the oncoming hell before dying? Helen apologizes to Lei. His effort has gone to waste. She's going to meet him now. But Al stops her. The dragon smacks Al away, but he's saved by the robe. The dragon is surprised he's still alive after taking his attack. Is he really human? Al tells him he's not only human, but also a farmer, while punching the dragon, causing it to stumble. The dragon says, let's continue. He's looking forward to seeing his face grimace in despair and fear. Al tells Helen to step back. Rest assured, He'll protect her. Al and the dragon fight for a bit. Al eventually gets hit by the dragon's tail. It then tries to squish him. That doesn't work, so he shoots a fireball. Al gets knocked down, but says it's fine. A farmer can't be killed so easily. Farm work is great exercise, after all. As the fight continues, Helen tells Al that's enough. She doesn't want anyone else to die for her. Al grabs her hand and tells her it isn't her fault that others got hurt, and tells her that he met her brother Lay today. He said that she would blame herself after getting her memory back, so he wanted Al to tell her something. I don't regret saving your life. Besides, since she survived, she should live a happy life for everybody. Please live happily so that he can be proud of himself. Al's here to bring hope to her, even if they face adversity, as long as they try hard, they may stand a chance of winning. He just wants to tell her, don't give up. And this is the dragon's weakness. The dragon asks, what are they doing? Her desperate plight hasn't changed at all. Keep lamenting and begging in despair. Al asks, what is he afraid of? His status keeps dropping. Is it because of this? Lei guessed it right. He devours people's souls and turn it into his power. So, on the contrary, hope can seize his power. He's not afraid of him now. The dragon goes to attack him, but Al uppercuts him, finishing him off. Al then sighs her for leaf. With his current status, he has the upper hand. Helen asks if he's alright. He's telling her, yeah, but what about her? But then, Helen stabs him and is most likely possessed by the dragon. Then the episode ends. Some personal thoughts. I couldn't really get into this episode because there were a lot of inconsistencies that took me out of it. The first one, when the dragon was shooting his fireballs, he
he flies really far ahead and there's no way they could have ran that far so I assumed he was just blocking off their path so they couldn't escape however he then flies past them meaning that they were running faster than he was flying which makes no sense the second one in episode 2 Lei is killed when he's going to help Helen after she trips but in this episode the dragon attacks him while he's just standing there he then puts him down gently like when you tell a dog to drop something which I was like that's kind of weird but anyway so I don't end this video on a negative note but some things I did like I do like how cheesy this is and then when Al's like I'm not only a human I'm a farmer like it's one of those it's kind of just the cherry on top of cheesiness I also liked the ending I wasn't expecting that to happen so it caught me off guard I don't have too much else to say about it I'm looking forward to next week but that's about it so yeah